There are a few different things that I wanted to show in the screencast to accompany chapter 12. Um, the first is uh, saving files for use in InDesign, so kind of prepping my image files. Um, and for the most part, the images that I used in InDesign um, are just um, easily saved PSD files or PDF files. Um, I could have used my Illustrator files as well, uh, but I generally kind of prefer to have a PDF file uh, when going into InDesign. Now this file, the Chapter 10 Results file that I saved, um, this could have been saved as uh, an AI, a PDF, uh, or a TIFF file. Um, so I just want to show a couple of things I would keep in mind. Um, one is if I know that I'm going to InDesign because I want to print, I might be interested in looking under the File menu in Document Color Mode um, and if need be changing to CMYK Color. So that is certainly an issue that you want to tackle before you get into InDesign. Um, in my case, I've got an inkjet printer, it prints an RGB color, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, then if I save the file as, I could choose PDF and that would work out um, just fine. I could leave it as an AI file. Um, I could choose an Illustrator EPS file, although um, probably in the future we won't be doing that quite as much anymore. Um, so, so those would probably work out just fine. If I save it um, as a, I have to redo that. So edit this out. Start again. I talked about saving it as a PDF. I could save it as a PDF file and that would be um, just fine. And if I did that, I might also want to take a look at what it looks like in Photoshop. So I might come to Photoshop and open up that PDF file. And I'm going to go back to here. Now as a PDF file, I'm just going to check on the size of it. Um, I do want it to be of printing resolution if I am going to print it. And I could, if I want to, I could flatten the image in Photoshop just to put it on a white background and keep the file a little bit smaller. Um, and then again, I could check my uh, color mode and then save as here from Photoshop. So um, this would be a two-step process if I needed to change anything, if I wanted to check on it, make sure the resolution was right, um, and so forth. I could save it as a TIFF, for instance, from here, which is what I did um, in the in the work file uh, that's available on the website. Um, ultimately, in this case, the PDF would have been fine as well in terms of printing. The next item that I wanted to show for uh, Chapter 12, uh, to supplement Chapter 12, is uh, to watch out for out of gamut colors and this is true across all of the Adobe products um, so for instance if I look up here um, in my um, sorry in my in the color that's used for my fill if I would choose for instance this RGB yellow which is kind of just a basic RGB yellow uh, red and green values all the way up to 255 and blue down at zero I see a, a color swatch that is a incredibly bright yellow and beneath that, I see a small color swatch. Um, it's hard to see this, but it's a slightly different kind of shade of yellow. Um, and an exclamation point in a kind of a yield sign on triangle uh, next to it. Now, if I press the triangle, the triangle is the out of gamut warning. And so if I click on that, um, my color is going to shift to one that is in gamut. The out of gamut warning simply means um, this color is available for viewing on the screen, but it is impossible to make this color with inks. So out of gamut means it's out of the range of being able to print. Um, and when I clicked the exclamation point, it pushed my yellow into one that would actually be printable. So that's just something to watch out for as you're selecting colors and as you're working um, not only in InDesign, but also in Photoshop and in Illustrator. Uh, the second item that I wanted to make sure to, to show um, has to do with linking images. So for instance, you have all of these images in the InDesign document um, that are uh, showcasing your work across multiple pages. 
Um, and if you import those images and leave the box that says link checked, and this is true both for Illustrator and InDesign, you have a links panel for both, um, you will see the image um, in the links panel when it's selected. You will also, in the links panel, see a list of images that you can, you know, you can click on, on an image and that will help you, um, you know, know what's there. So um, when this image is selected, I could uh, potentially do a couple of things. One is um, I could embed the link, which instead of linking the file um, in my, on my hard drive, I could actually embed the image onto my page in my InDesign document. This, again, this is true in InDesign and in Illustrator. Embedding the image will create a larger file size, um, so know that, but it will also mean that if you were to bring your file somewhere else, you wouldn't need to bring all of your supporting files. So I could just bring this one InDesign file if all of my images were embedded. It would be a large file, but I would know that if I just had this one file, I had all that I needed. Um, now, I'm not including in that conversation fonts. That's a whole different story. Um, but in terms of images, that's the case. Um, the other thing that I wanted to show is that you can also relink. So all of my images are linked. Um, I know that because there is a little icon. If they were embedded, there would be a little embed icon here. Um, and since they're all linked, that means that I could relink them. Um, so I could potentially put the same image on every single page um, just to get the placement right and then go to each one of them or each page and, and use relink from this menu. Let me go to that menu one more time. So I'm in the links panel. If you can't find it, go under window and find links. In the links panel, I'm on this little side menu from the top right corner. Um, and as long as my image is selected, let me make sure it's selected, I could relink. Um, and relinking the image, um, now I would be able to go through and find that image. It's not in this folder, as I know. It um, should be one level up, my start folder. Um, so I would then go and find my relink. If you happen to bring your files with you uh, to a new computer, but you've moved files around or you've moved your folders around, you may need to relink your images. Um, it's not a big deal. You just need to show in design where your files are being saved. So don't worry if you see that. As long as you have your, your um, files with you, uh, you, you can relink them without much of a problem. You can also swap an image, right? So if I did choose relink, I don't actually have to relink with the, the image that was there. I could relink with a different image and that would replace what was there with with something else. I'll Command Z and um, now you know how to link and relink your images and also watch out for out of gamut um, colors and um, finally think about saving your files in terms of prepping them for InDesign uh, before you make your books.